Hi guys, it's Robin with Bouta Jardin and Bootiful Flowers in Vancouver, BC. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make probably the most common type of bridal bouquet that I make in my business, a rose and hydrangea mixed bouquet. Okay, so to begin, like we do with all of our videos, I'm going to go over the basic supplies that you would need. And these sort of supplies are what you would need um, pretty much for any kind of bouquet that you're making. You're going to have to, or you're going to need and want a vase of water ready. You don't need a lot of water. A couple of inches is fine. If you've watched our other videos, you know that you only really want to get the bottom of the bouquet submerged in water. You don't need it to submerge the entire bouquet handle. Uh, you need really good snips. And if you're doing any work with hydrangeas, I... I can't recommend enough having proper either gardening shears or even better um, florist uh, snips because hydrangeas have probably the thickest stems of any flower that you're going to work with and if you don't make a proper clean cut they may not hydrate well and for hydrangeas hydration is everything in terms of keeping them perky looking. Um, I would still have scissors just for cutting ribbon but don't neglect these if you're working with hydrangeas. In terms of tape, this is what you're gonna to use to bind your bouquet together so the stems stay together when you're done. Um, a lot of videos and a lot of people might recommend using floral tape, there's nothing wrong with that. I just personally don't like it. I find that it's not very strong and it doesn't stay in place and it has a tendency to snap. I prefer something like strapping tape, which is a real tape. It has an actual sticky back, it's very tough and it secures things very well. It is more expensive, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, but if it is within your budget or you're making a lot of bouquets, I, I do recommend this over this for this kind of work. And then to finish your bouquet, when it's all made and it's all assembled, you're gonna wanna wrap it just so it has that sort of finished look that wedding work has. You're gonna wanna have some kind of a ribbon. Um, I, my preference is for like a double face satin. Uh, this is a wired ribbon. I don't find wired ribbon to be the best, but it's not a deal breaker. So I just happen to like this color. I most often use white or ivory just so it blends in with the bride's dress. But um, today, because it's just for a video, I felt like using peach because I think it's a very nice color. And this part's optional, uh, but some kind of a finish is always nice on the bouquet. This is a really good way to glam up something and make it look even more professional. And, and before I forget, the pins. So you're going to need to get that ribbon to stick onto the bouquet handle. And the way you do that is by inserting pins. So my preference is to use the shorter ones versus the long ones. These are easier to find, but if you're able to source short pins, even sewing pins will work. Although these are a decorative pearl headed one that's used in wedding work. Um, it's only because they're shorter, they go in easier, and they don't tend to poke out the other side of the, the handle. Okay, so that's the supplies. And now we're gonna talk about the flowers we're gonna use. For this type of a bouquet, there's two main flowers that are gonna sort of form the base. And we're gonna use accent flowers to sort of bring out textures. Uh, the base is gonna be hydrangeas and roses. And if you've watched any of our other videos that use roses, you're familiar already with the care. It's the same sort of thing. You, I have uh, one here that I've prepped and one that I haven't. So with roses, it's about taking off the leaves. You can snip them off. You can use um, snips. To cut them off uh, if you're worried about stripping the stem. You can use a rose stripper, uh, a thorn stripper. I personally don't like to use them. I haven't yet used one that I really like and I formed the habit of just snapping it off. So you really can't go wrong as long as what you're doing doesn't damage the stem. After you take the leaves off, you can remove any thorns. This particular variety doesn't have a lot of thorns. There's one down here. You can snap them off like this or take your snips and just snip them off. Um, however you do it, you just want to get them out of the way so they don't poke you. Um, and the last thing you can do is remove the guard petals. As you've seen in other videos, these are the three or four really ugly looking petals on the outside of the rose. You can snap them off um, and you can save them even for um, petals if you're using them in your wedding. They're, they do really well for that, but you don't want them on your rose in a bouquet. So the last thing I do sometimes, I don't always do it, it depends on the rose. So you can see the size difference in the rose head. It's exactly the same variety. I got them out of the same pack. But one thing I like to do, because the trend now is for big open roses, some flowers, if they are open enough at the top, you can get your fingers right in there and sort of relax the petals. This is easier to do on older roses. These particular roses are about a week old. I've been hanging on to them for this tutorial. I just didn't really have the time till now, but it worked out that they, they loosen up quite a bit and you can get them to be really big, actually. You just want to be very careful. You don't want to ever press down on the top of a rose. It will bruise the petals. It'll show up as brown spots in a couple of hours, but that's, about, that's beautiful. I wouldn't probably take it more than that. So that opened it 
a lot. It's looking more like a garden rose now. So that's our roses. I'm also using spray roses before I get into the hydrangeas. They're very similar to roses. They're just mini roses. There's many on a stem. Same sort of thing. You take off the leaves and you take off the thorns. Put that aside. So the base of our bouquet is going to be hydrangeas, white hydrangeas. So there's really important care with hydrangea. They, they have a, a bad reputation sometimes in the industry, um, but they are used a lot in wedding work. So the reputation comes from their tendency to wilt. So the important thing to know with hydrangeas is they love water. So you want to be sure that before you start working that they are well hydrated. Um, we'll get a bit more into that in a second, but just to show you the prep, just like the rose, you want to take the leaves off. With hydrangeas, I do tend to snip them because I'm always a little worried at the top that I'm gonna go to pull a leaf off and it's gonna break one of the stems. So hydrangeas have, hang on a second, hydrangeas have a bunch of smaller florets on a larger stem. Um, and the thing about hydrangeas, when it comes to their care and hydrating them properly, they actually drink through their petals. So if you're worried about your hydrangeas wilting, if they're looking a little soft, and that's how you know a hydrangea is well hydrated, is to the touch, it's very crisp, almost like a head of lettuce. Um, you can dunk them upside down in a bucket of water, cool water, room temperature water, it's fine. And they will drink through their petals and it hydrates them really well. After about 30 minutes, I would take them and, and turn them upside, let them dry naturally. And the other thing with hydrangeas that you can do when you get them, wherever your source is from, you can make a clean cut at the bottom like this, and then you could cut vertically up the stem. And this is where having snips is important because you could not do this with office scissors. Um, it would just bruise the, the stem if it did anything at all. You make a vertical cut up. So now it's kind of like you've increased the surface that it's going to drink through and right away you'd get it into water. Um, we're going to keep it on the table just because I'm doing a demo right now, but that's the most important thing with hydrangeas. Keep them hydrated. They do not like to be out of water for long. So those are, that's going to form the base of our bouquet. In any sort of a mixed rose bridal bouquet, I like to do some accent flowers. So right now it's winter. I love to use dahlias, but dahlias aren't a winter flower. So I'm gonna use these spray moms that are beautiful. They look a little bit like mini dahlias, which is gonna give us some wonderful texture alongside those roses and those little spray roses. So chrysanthemums, one stem I've prepped, one stem I haven't. The main thing with chrysanthemums is they just tend to have a lot of leaves of them. It's, you're gonna do the same thing you did with the roses. You just take all of the leaves off. Um, I tend to remove the little flowers on the side because they're not gonna show up in your bouquet anyways. But here's a tip, it's a money-saving tip. If you're making boutonnieres as part of your plan, hang on to these little flowers, not the leaves. The leaves are gonna wilt. These aren't intended for boutonnieres. You wanna use greenery that's proper greenery and not leaves from flowers, but the flowers themselves are awesome. So what I'll do is as I work, I will have a little cup of water and I'll stick all of the extra little flowers that aren't gonna work in the bouquet, but I can use for a boutonniere. This is a fantastic way to save money. It can save you from having to order extra flowers just to make boutonnieres because these would have gone to waste anyways. So that's the chrysanthemum. And the last thing we're gonna have is some type of a filler. So this is wax flower. And wax flower right now is my favorite filler. I like it more than baby's breath. Again, it's a personal choice. I like baby's breath, don't get me wrong, but I find this to be a bit more of a sophisticated filler. It's, it works fantastic in any sort of a garden bouquet or um, like a highly textured bouquet. The thing about wax though is it's very expensive. So um, this is a typical bunch and it's a significantly more expensive than, than baby's breath. So you kind of want to use it sparingly if you're on a budget, um, if it works in your budget. And I'll go over at the very end how to, um, a couple of different ways to use it. But today all I'm going to do is you can see it's multi-branches. I'll just break off the branches I want to use and any little pieces that I think, like this one, that I could use in a boutonniere, whoops, I'm gonna put in my little boutonniere cup. Okay, so I've cleared the table and I have out just the flowers that I'm gonna to use to start. So if you watched our other bouquets, like the rose hand tied bridal bouquet, you would know that typically what we do is we start with one central flower and we build around it in the circle. The hydrangea rose bouquet is different. Um, with hydrangeas, they're super large flowers, so you kind of have to work um, within them. It doesn't really work to kind of build, um, like start with one flower and build around it. So what you would do, what I do, is I take the hydrangeas I'm working with, all of them, if they're large hydrangeas, and for a bridal bouquet, it's three. That's my personal preference. I like to use three stems. For a bridesmaid, I would use two, just because they are smaller bouquets. 
um, and then you start putting them together in a way that's about as round as you can get. And as you can see with these hydrangeas, it's really hard to find hydrangeas that are naturally perfectly round. So you're not going to get anything that's perfect. Um, but I'm going to show you how you can get that round shape in the long run. However, these actually turn out really well. Sometimes I have hydrangeas that slope a lot on the side and you just have to find a way to work with it. But this is fairly round. Um, one tip I have if you're working, if you're making bouquets is to have a mirror handy that you can look into. I actually have one on my side. So if you see me turning to my side, I'm just taking a quick look at myself to make sure that it's, it's fairly symmetrical and it is, it's not bad. I like this. Um, because the mirror will show you things that you can't see when you look down on the bouquet. So you could actually bind it at this point with your strapping tape. I often do that when I find a position that works because otherwise they do tend to move around. So I'm just really quickly going to bind it, not too high up, a couple of inches from the very top. Oh, they're moving already. Do I still like it? Yeah, I do. That's still good. So. Before we start inserting any more flowers, we're just gonna tie that to keep it from moving. You can tape it down the stem a little, so it keeps it a bit more secure. Okay, so when you have your three hydrangeas together, again, three for a bridal, two for a bridesmaid, um, you're gonna start inserting flowers into it. So the way hydrangeas are, they naturally come is they, they have like smaller florets that are sort of assembled on one stem. So you can part the florets and insert things right between them. They kind of act like a web and they kind of hold up the flowers as well. So the only, the main thing you want to be careful about when you do this is you don't want to insert it so roughly that a floret snaps because then a part of your bouquet is going to wilt. And with hydrangeas, that can happen so fast. So especially if it's hot outside. So you're going to do this very, very carefully. So I start with my biggest flowers, usually the roses. I do, I bind my three hydrangeas and I start inserting the roses first. Um, and then you kind of do it wherever you sort of see a gap, just through here. And I get, I like them sitting out a little. I don't like them flush. I like them out a little. And actually how much you stick out the flowers is going to help you get a rounded, um, a rounded edge. So here it's kind of, there's a big hole here and it's kind of flat. I would fill that in with a rose. So any place where the bouquet, like the hydrangeas are kind of, flat you get the rose to stick up a little just to sort of you're going to use your flowers to get that rounded shape which your hydrangeas may, may naturally not have so just to keep it the video going so i don't want it to be too long i'm going to do this with the rest of my roses take a break do this with the rest of my roses and i'll check in with you in just a few minutes okay hey guys welcome back um i have inserted all of the roses that i wanted to put in so i have put in here on top of the three white hydrangeas i started with for this bridal bouquet i've inserted nine standard roses and that's roughly what i use i use between nine and ten for a bridal and roughly six roses if i was making a bridesmaid bouquet with just two hydrangeas so you can stop here oh and before we go on i just wanted to point out um so it's got a fairly round shape now it's, it's looking really nice um Sometimes you have to trim a bit of the hydrangea off. This was a florette that was sort of hanging too far down one side and it was making it lopsided. So very, very carefully, because you, you don't want to trim too much. You can't undo it. You can trim little bits, bits of the florets if they kind of ruin the sort of symmetry of your bouquet. So, okay, so we've covered that and how we got here. You can stop here. There are plenty of florists and plenty of people who like it like this. Um, they want just hydrangeas and roses. It's going to come down to, and it's my favorite word, personal preference. I like, I personally think it's a bit flat. I like to have a lot of texture. So we're going to keep adding more flowers on top of this just to really get it to pop, um, to get it sort of almost like a garden inspired look going on. So uh, the next thing we're going to put in, because we're finished with our roses, are the spray roses. So you're just going to, just like you did with the regular roses, you're going to insert them through the florets of the hydrangea, being very careful not to break anything or snap a floret. And the thing to know with uh, spray roses, awesome for boutonnieres, by the way, a fantastic flower, is they are, have multiple heads and they're not all on the same level. So when you insert this in, you can see this hydrangea here is significantly lower than the rest. So my tip here, just like with the chrysanthemums, is cut it off because it's not going to show in your bouquet. It's going to get buried in the, in the florets. And you can use this for boutonnieres. So the same thing, right away I trim it and I put it in my little cup of water. That will become part of a boutonniere in the future. So it's not going to waste and it prevents me from having to order another bunch of 10 spray roses um, just to make more boutonnieres. So 
you know what, I may even end up trimming this one that's on the top. But we'll do that when we get there. So just starting someplace easy. Oh, and by the way, I've bound it at this point. Like I said, I, I don't, maybe I didn't cover that, but I like to bind as I go, not necessarily once at the end. I find I like it because then I can put down if I need to grab a supply or, or prep some more flowers. Um, so it's, it's just, it's ready to add more basically. Okay, so I like it right there. You can see it beside the regular rose. So even though they're pretty much the exactly the same color, just the size difference and the fact that these are clustered is what's going to give this bouquet more visual interest. It's going to give it texture. It's going to look like something you picked out of a garden. So if that's the type of look you like, if you love that garden inspired look, this is what you need to do. You need to add flowers in different shapes and sizes and textures, and that's what's gonna give you um, a really beautiful lush bouquet. Just like I did with the roses, I'm gonna save some minutes and insert the rest of my spray roses before we move on to the mums. Welcome back again. So I've added in my spray roses. So just to recap from the top, three white hydrangeas, nine roses, budget about 10 in your flower plan, and I put in five spray roses, which is really typical for what I use for a bridal bouquet. Um, and you can see just already with them, just that little change, how much better that looks than with just the roses and hydrangeas, almost the same color, but that little clustering that they have, and they're so ruffled. They almost look like little mini garden roses, this particular variety, not all spray roses have that look, but these ones do, um, makes it so much more interesting. So we're ready to move on to the, the inserting the next flower, and we're gonna do it exactly the same way we did it with the other ones. Um, and we're also going to put some on the outside just to fill in some gaps. As I was working, I noticed that there was a gap just at the front here. So I'm going to just, just place one of my chrysanthemums here and it fills it in so well, which is one of the nice things about um, working with some uh, extra white flowers. They blend in with the hydrangeas. And because it's a little long, I'm just going to trim it. It gets in the way. You don't have to do that. It's just a, something that I do. Um, so yeah, so and just like with the spray roses, we're going to insert a couple on top. I like things to touch. I don't like having flowers that just sit by themselves in a sea of hydrangea. So um, like we did with the spray roses, we're gonna trim just a little bit more the lower stems that kind of just get in the way. I'll even trim one more. And we've got a nice little cluster and I'm gonna put it at the top. Don't forget when the bride holds the bouquet, she's holding it sort of tilted forward. So you do want the top of the bouquet to look um, the nicest. You want to have sort of the biggest and showiest flowers at the top. Okay, so inserting it in. See, it took a bit of time. You want to be careful. You don't want to break anything and be too rough. So there we are. We've got the, the mums added in. And what I'm going to do, just like we did before, is take a few minutes to insert the rest of them, save you a bit of time, and we'll check in again. And we're almost done. Okay, so I've added in my stems of spray roses. In this case, I used three. I was really happy with three. I like the way it looked. Sometimes I use up to five, um, but as I've explained in other videos, flower arranging isn't an exact science, but I'd budget five. But you know, don't worry if you use a little less. You can always save the flowers for uh, table arrangements or for boutonnieres. Um, so you, if you go back to earlier in the video when we just had the roses, you can see the difference between the two bouquets. This is way more lush. It's more full. It's more round looking. So this is the kind of bouquet I like. I like a lot of different textures and I like when it looks visually interesting. Um, the very last thing that we're going to add is the wax flowers or the filler basically. And you can use baby's breath. Lots and lots of people do. My personal favorite is wax flower. Uh, the thing about wax flower is it is more expensive. It is not exactly year round where we are in Vancouver. There's a period in the year roughly from early May to about late June when it's available, but it's not quite in the best shape. It tends to be very, very small flowers and a lot of green. So just be aware wherever you're ordering from that wax flower kind of does have a season. So even though you may be able to get it, it may not be as full or as flowered as you'd like. So I tend to not use it in those months, but when it is available, it tends to peak in the winter. Um, it's my number one choice. So in this case, I've uh, taken off just the individual, like one smaller stem. I've stripped off all the little leaves and all the little side branches, so it's easier to insert. And we're gonna do what we've done from the very beginning and just insert it in through a gap or through some florets. And just for that little, little, little bit of textural difference. And look at how all of a sudden this bouquet starts to sing. You have these little flowers that are really starting to make that garden look come together. And what I'm gonna do one last time is take a little break and put a little bit more touches in the rest of the bouquet and then we're um, just about done and ready to wrap it up. Okay hey guys, we are almost at the end. We are done. I've put in the wax flower and you can see it's just the perfect amount of filler. You could use baby's breath if you prefer. You can use limonium. 
um, but it, it's just the perfect accent to really bring out the sort of natural beauty of all the other flowers. Um, so before I wrap it, I just wanted to show one thing. Um, the bouquet, the tutorial we did today didn't have any greens in it, but if you wanted to do greens, um, I just wanted to show what one bunch of uh, eucalyptus parvifolia looks like. This is, I love this green. It's uh, any type of a eucalyptus is gonna have sort of an, um, sort of a sage green color to it. Um, and it complements sort of paler blush shades really, really well. So you could work some of that on the outside. You can even cut stems, and I'm gonna do this really quick just to show you how good this looks, and insert it just like we did with the flowers into the bouquet, and look at how good that would look with little bits of, tiny little bits of eucalyptus poking out. It really brings home that garden-inspired look that is so hot right now, and is and it's beautiful. I mean, that's what I would do for my wedding. I love a little bit of greenery, but like I said, not everybody does, so we're gonna end it there. I've bound it all. I've taped it actually just a few inches down. It, the further down you tape it, you don't want to go too far or you're going to pass the point where your ribbon ends. Um, the more in control this bouquet stem is, the easier it is to wrap with ribbon. So I have some wired peach ribbon. Um, you can use uh, any type of ribbon as long as it's sort of satiny. I don't really recommend a wired ribbon. I find it a little bit harder to work with, but it's what I had in this color, which I do love. I think it accents the, the light blush pink really well. So the way to do this is the way we wrap any bouquet. You, I start at the top and, or you can start at the bottom actually, but I start at the top. It's just my habit. And I don't use anything. You could use a small, um, like a little sewing pin if you wanted to secure it. I just use the tension of the ribbon itself to hold it in place. And you start wrapping it around. And if you just do it tightly, by the time you go around once, it's in place. It's not going to move. And you just keep moving down. You'd want to try to keep that as smooth as possible. And I for sure want to cover the tape. So I'm going to go um, at least to the end of the tape. You don't have to, to cover too far. Just because if you do kind of have too much ribbon on your handle, when you're transporting it sometimes in the vase, it gets splashed up with water sometimes. But I happen to tape it further down than I usually do. So I'm gonna go a little further down. I'm gonna stop there, that's good. I wouldn't cover it more than that. Let's see, what do I, I think I like that. Okay, so then you trim it, and you get to the end a little bit longer than you need, just a bit, like a centimeter or so. Trimmed, because that's a raw edge that I cut, you are going to fold it back. Hold it back and put your pins in. I'm going to do an extra little decorative edge just because I feel like it. I think it will really make this bouquet pop. Um, and that is, I'm not going to put the rest of the pins in. Normally I would do at least three at the bottom, but I want to add a little bit of silver um, jewelry to the bottom. So I have this sort of jeweled uh, strip of ribbon. You can find any sort of an accent. You can find it at Michael's. I found it. This isn't sticky, so we're going to have to use a jewel to make it stick. And all you do is you just cut roughly the same width as the bouquet. There's no trick to this. It's just securing it with some pins. So I line it up right at the beginning. And I would insert some pins in here just to make it stick. I'm gonna do this really quick. So it may not be the neatest job. Of course, with wedding work, you always want it to be as perfect as possible. Okay, there we go. And I would do one more just to keep it in place. So you can see I use the shorter pins here. So because they're shorter, I can insert them directly across. There's, they're nowhere near to coming out the other end. If you use the longer pins, you want to slant them up or down just to be sure that they don't come through the other, come out through the other side. Um, and because they're shorter, I do also find that they go in easier. There's less distance to pierce. Okay, the last thing we do, so, oh my God, it's beautiful. Look at that, it's, it's stunning. So we just wanna trim it shorter. So for the actual wedding, you only need about two and a half, um, uh, two and a half hands is in terms of as a measurement for how long the stem should be. Um, so you're gonna trim it shorter. I trim it to about there. Okay, so that is the finished product. It looks fantastic. And then 
right away because remember we talked about in other videos when you cut a flower stem within seconds it starts to seal up so right away that's why you want your vase of water handy is you put it in the vase of, wa vase of water you only want the water to submerge the ends by a couple of centimeters you don't want it to touch the ribbon because it will soak it up and the ribbon will get wet um, and you keep it like this until you're ready for the wedding um, and at that point you take it out of the water because as we talked about hydrangeas in particular are really prone to wilting so the most important thing is to keep this cool keep all the ends hydrated and only take it out of the water when you're ready to knead it okay thanks guys thanks for watching our video i'm robin with beautiful uh, and buta jordan and uh, if you have any ideas for future videos please drop me a line i'd like to i'd love to help you out um, and if you're in the vancouver area and you need flowers uh, don't hesitate to drop me a line as well and i will answer your questions thanks